The Japanese Grand Prix is just around the corner, and the fan favorite circuit is set to provide another exhilarating race. The cool Japanese spring, paired with a high chance of rain on race day, could lead to absolute chaos and a race that will reward the skill of the driver more than the innate pace of the Red Bull car. It's also the first race of the season that we're going to see some big upgrades, and Red Bull have one plan that is going to shock many fans. Today, I'm going to check out what they've got planned, and why it could be a bad weekend for some of the drivers further down the grid. So, don't go anywhere. Ferrari's win in Australia last time out is being seen as Max Verstappen's loss rather than Carlos Sainz's win. If the Dutchman hadn't retired with a stuck-on brake four laps in, the Scuderia would likely have had a much harder time of things around Albert Park. There is a debate to be had about whether the Red Bull's tyre wear would have allowed the Ferrari drivers to fight against Max anyway, but that's all just theoretical. What isn't theoretical is the expected Red Bull response in Japan. Max isn't a driver to take failure lightly, and after having his win streak broken by a mechanic's mistake, he'll be out to prove that this season is still his to dominate. The expected rain on race day may make that more challenging, but he'll still fancy his chances. Ferrari are probably the favorites to try and stop him, but McLaren will fancy their chances as well. Last year, they were very competitive at Suzuka, and have also started this year in better shape than last. Lando Norris was not far off Carlos Sainz in Melbourne, and felt he should have finished second, so there are multiple threats emerging if Red Bull don't get everything right. Lando is exceptional in the rain as well, which is likely to be a skill set he'll need to call upon. Seeing Red Bull under pressure on Sunday would be great for the championship, and Damon Hill thinks it will happen. I think this is going to be a big test for the competition against Red Bull at Suzuka, Hill said on the F1 Nation podcast. I think this is really going to test the aero efficiency, tire wear efficiency in the car as well. But Ferrari are quick in a straight line, and it is a lot of straight line, a lot of high-speed stuff at Suzuka. And what I really hope is that Ferrari are able to take the race to Red Bull during the actual race itself. The problem for Red Bull's challenges is that the Milton Keynes-based team have been biding their time, waiting for the cooler weather tracks to introduce the real form of their new slimmed-down side pods. The Japanese track is well suited to the RB20. If strengths are in the high-speed corners, which is what the Suzuka circuit is known for. In the first sector, immediate rivals Ferrari could also be vulnerable to McLaren, given the MCL38 strong points are largely in the high speed. Our car worked really well in Australia. From the first lap, it seemed like a winning car, explained Carlos Sainz. But it will be difficult to maintain this pace on every track until we introduce an update. To close the gap, we saw in Bahrain and Jeddah compared to Red Bull. Ferrari aren't expected to bring any sizable upgrades until round 7 of the season at Imola in mid-May. Red Bull, however, will have a new floor for the RB20 in Suzuka, which will no doubt help them balance their car better and resolve some of the tyre problems that they suffered from in Australia. With Pirelli bringing the softest of the range and the track likely to be very green after a wet Japanese winter, tyre wear will be a big concern for many teams. However, Red Bull will be going further than just a floor upgrade. When they introduced their new slim down side pod design at the start of the season, it shocked many people. There were plenty of comparisons to the Mercedes Zero pod design, but on closer inspection, it proved to be much more refined than that. The design was possible thanks to advances in engine cooling technology, allowing chief designer Adrian Newey to wrap the outer shell of the car much tighter than previously. It was theorized when the design was debuted that the bodywork could be slimmed down significantly further once F1 left the hot temperatures of the Middle East and the Australian summer, meaning Japan could play host to a massive Zeropod-esque upgrade for the RB20. By focusing their time on upgrading the cooling on the RB20 and the bodywork that wraps around it, the team can make further use of a trick it deployed in 2023. Red Bull will be partly offsetting the aerodynamic testing restrictions, which limit wind tunnel runs and CFD simulations, with the Red Bull affected the most last year due to its lead in the Constructors' Championship, in addition to a further 10% cut as punishment for exceeding the 2021 cost cap. The aerodynamic testing restrictions allow exceptions for wind tunnel testing solely for the development of power unit heat exchangers that reject heat to air or the running of the power unit from a boundary commencing at the power unit air intake ducts. As per last season, and again with a shift to Mercedes-style zero pods, 
Red Bull has placed an emphasis on upgrades that lean toward cooling. The repackaging of the internal components falls outside of the ATR to then enable the team to spend less of its allowance refining the external bodywork. Red Bull are obviously keeping things quiet on what the new upgrades will look like, and when asked for some details, Max Verstappen said, Well, I mean, the color will be the same, he said, before adding, You'll see. It isn't just Red Bull that will be bringing upgrades, though. The grid this season appears to be split into four different groups. You have a top tier featuring only Red Bull, then Ferrari, McLaren, Mercedes, and Aston Martin are all quite closely matched. Below them, there's Williams, RB, and Haas. Then, at the absolute bottom is Sauber, who have forgotten how to do a pit stop, and Alpine, who have forgotten how to make a car. Do you remember how Esteban Ocon celebrated on the radio after not getting knocked out in Q1 during the Australian GP qualifying? That is how bad things have gotten for the French team. It is believed that the car is well over the weight limit, but also the engine is down on power compared to its competitors an issue that the FIA and the rest of the teams disagree with. This has resulted in the Alpine team not even getting close to scoring a single point in the season so far. Pierre Gasly, however, is hopeful that the upgrades that the team is bringing to Japan will help with the pace and move the team up in the performance ladder. Pierre Gasly said, It will be a step ahead of the situation we're in now. At the moment, we need every single update possible to improve performance. So, that's positive. I know that more will come later, but I believe that at the moment it is mainly a matter of trying to understand what the big picture is, whether to stay true to the concept we have or try to change course. Anything that will reduce the weight of the Alpine car will be a massive improvement. Carrying extra weight saps lap time and is an unforgivable sin in the F1 world. Alpine will hope that the upgrade can get them close to contention for consolation points but one of their main competitors for those points also has new parts for the Japanese Grand Prix. The Racing Bulls took their first points of 2024 at the Australian GP thanks to a 7th place result for Yuki Tsunoda. These points are pure gold for the Fienza team after a tricky start to the season. However, this difficult start is not a surprise for the Italian team. The technicians at Bista, the aerodynamic headquarters that will be moved entirely to Milton Keynes within the year, were already expecting to be 6th or 7th fastest. They had to deal with several small problems with the new car, which were first found at the shakedown and preseason testing. The team wants to reduce overall drag and weight on the V-Carb 01. To achieve this goal, a new medium-load rear wing debuted in Australia. It featured a different compromise between the main profile and the mobile flap for greater efficiency on straights. The new wing was also lighter, helping them shed any excess weight they were carrying. For Honda and Yuki Tsunoda, the home race will see a new floor upgrade for the RB. The new specification will be a first step, which will make the car less linked to the old AT04. There were worries before the season that the closer integration of Red Bull and RB would give them an unfair advantage over the rest of the bottom half of the grid, but that advantage hasn't surfaced yet, if there even is one. If this new floor gives them a big boost, though, the questions over the competitive integrity of having two teams owned by the same company will begin again. Yuki and Daniel will be eager to get to grips with the new parts as quickly as possible. The Australian especially will be hoping that he can set the car up in a way to suit him better and start to refine some confidence. Ricardo will be expected to silence speculation linking Liam Lawson to his seat in Suzuka. However, Super Formula driver Ayumu Iwasa will make his Formula 1 weekend debut at the Japanese Grand Prix by appearing in Free Practice 1 in Ricardo's car. Swapping out Daniel for one of the obligatory rookie driver free practice drives of the season so early is a surprise, and if it wasn't for it being Honda and Iwasa's home race, RB would probably have preferred to wait. The lack of that extra hour of testing at a circuit like Suzuka, which requires a lot of confidence, and with a brand new floor, could cause big problems for Daniel as the pressure on his place on the grid starts to ramp up. Are you excited to see what Red Bull have in store for the Japanese Grand Prix? Are you expecting Ferrari to be able to fight them again, or was Australia just a one-off? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, and until next time, drive safe and bye for now.